Praise God, praise God. As we can just go ahead and get started, as we can turn to Colossians 4 and 2. Simple verse, Colossians 4 and 2 says, Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. As I titled the, today, the message today is, Keep walking, keep praying. Can we worship God right for a minute? Thank you, Lord God, for this blessed opportunity to be in your house today, God. Jesus is in your name, Lord, as we can keep praying and keep walking, Lord, as you know what's going on in this world today, God. Jesus, as you can open up our hearts, open up our, our minds, God, and let you enter, enter in this place right now, Lord, in your name. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus. God, as y'all may be seated. As I was looking at this, as I was thinking about what uh, when Lot was in Sodom and Gomorrah, but as we go a little bit before that, we realize that Lot should have never been there. Lot should have never been in that situation because when God told Abraham to leave, he said, go alone. But as we find that Abraham took Lot with him, Lot was never supposed to be in that situation. Lot was never supposed to be there. But as we sometimes in our life, daily lives, we find out that we are in places that we should never be in. We should we get ourselves we we blank we ask God as we ask God sometimes, well, why did you put me in this situation? And God's trying to tell us, I wasn't the one that put you in this situation. God gives us a choice. Either we take that choice or we don't. God wants us God wants us to make the right choice. But sometimes as we figure out that we don't make the right choice. When we want that car that looks so beautiful on the lot, but when that first paycheck, when that first bill comes in, the car's not so pretty. Or if the AC goes out when it's 100 degrees out, it's not that nice. When the leather and the interior starts tearing down, well, it really wasn't that nice of a car at all. But... When Lot and Abraham was together, there were disputes because there were too much, too much stuff going on. So Abraham told him, we need to go our separate ways. So I'm going to let you pick. Well, Lot picked the beautiful things out of, out of the place. And he set his tent up and looking towards Sodom. Now, a lot of people say, as well, we, like I said, we get ourselves in these situations that we were never meant to be in anyways. And when we think, well, I can handle that situation, so I'm going to take my time in that place. But we can't handle it because we're not ready for it. We get mad when we think God's holding us back. God's not holding us back. God is getting us ready to go someplace. We hear a lot of these people that think they get, they're ready to be a missionary, but when they get there, they, they fight battles that they were never meant to fight yet. God is trying to prepare us. God is trying to get us ready. But that's why we need to continue in prayer. We need to keep praying that God will send us somewhere that we are needed. Everybody wants to go someplace. Somebody, everybody wants to do good. But when somebody first gets in, Tipper had to go to school to be, to be in the veterinarian. But when her first day at college, she couldn't, like, all right, I'm ready. I can do this. Joash had to go to school to get where he's at today when his first day of college. He couldn't be like, all right, I'm ready to do this. That's the way a lot of people are. Same as a lot of people think when they read those baby books, they're, they're experts in babies. And I'm here to tell you that ain't right. It's not right at all because kids are different than page 36 child. But anywho, as when things started getting bad in Sodom, Lot started... Lot was in the middle of it. But at the same time, Abraham was praying to God that he would watch over Abraham, watch over Lot. Because God told him, I'm going to destroy that place. I'm here to destroy that place. So Abraham started bargaining with him. God, if you can find 50 people, will you please save that place? And God told him he would. So God searched it. And came back to Abraham and said, I didn't find 50 people. So Abraham started doing it down until he got to 10 people. 
He said, God, if you can find ten people, he said, God said, I will, I will not, I will not destroy that place. But he couldn't even find ten people in the land. And then we find out that when Lot and his family was in there, Abraham, God sent angels to come and get them. But something happened when the angels showed up because the the people in Sodom didn't like them. They wanted to do ungodly things to them. And Lot tried to protect them to the point when he got them in their house and the men were trying to get to him, he offered his own daughters. He offered his own daughters to them. Now it's sad when you get in a situation where you're trying to bargain with the enemy. There is no bargaining with the enemy. If the enemy wants something, they're going to try everything they can to get to it. They, you can tell them, you can tell the devil, well, if you leave me alone, if you already bargained with him, he already has won you. But, he, but the angels, angels make them go blind and they tell them, it's time to get out. we got to go now. So Lot gathered his family. He tried to grab his son-in-laws, but they did not want to go. Now I'm going to tell you right now, if, if you're if you know somebody or you're one of your friends and you're trying to go where God wants you to go, but they don't want you, they don't want to go, then it's time to leave them. Why do we need to let this world hold us back? When somebody says, "Well, you don't really need to do that. You can stay right here and do that." If God wants you to go, if God was moving, you wants to move you forward, and if somebody's holding you back, then it's time to let them go. Would you rather let God go or somebody that don't want you to do godly things? And I know you're, I know they're, they're, they're friends. We love them. It could be a family member. It could be a best friend that says, you don't really need to do that. If it goes against God's word, you don't really need them. So they left, he left the son-in-law because they didn't, they didn't think he, they were fine. When you get to a place where you get immune to it, you don't see it. We see this world today where they're trying to get everybody immune to sin. Where it's not really a big deal as long as it doesn't bother me. But it does bother you because it's getting to the point where everybody is immune to it. When you hear about, well, when it's just a daily school shooting, when you hear when back when I was still young, when I was younger, it was crazy to hear about that. But it's getting to the point where, nah, it was another school shooting yesterday. And it's no big deal. They're getting us, they're, this world, the enemy is trying to get us immune to it where the church gets lenient and quit praying. Sometimes I do believe that's what's going on in this world. The church got out of the closet and quit praying because they just got used to it. We don't need to get used to it. We don't need to get used to ungodly things. We need to get back in that prayer closet and praying to God and saying, God, you need to move. We don't need to be, be with, we are of this world. No. We are in this world, but we need not be of this world. God hung out with the poor, but He was not acting like them. He was trying to show them a better, better communion, a better way, a better truth, a better, a better God. That's what God was trying to show them. But when they were walking and they were getting out of the city, Lot's wife turned around and turned into a pillar of salt because they told him, do not look back. Whatever you came from, if you came from a sinful place, if you came from a sinful household, do not go look back because something will see, something will make it look pretty, something will get get you excited because that is what the enemy does. He tries to get you excited. He tries to get you turned around from God. Now, why did I say keep pray, keep walking and keep praying? We see the way this world is coming in today. We see social media is getting just turned around. Where well, it's easier to complain and, and judge people on Facebook, but you can't do it to their face. We see that people can hide behind social media because you don't really know who they are. But what the enemy is trying to do, the enemy is trying to get you to turn away from God to look at that thing. We see what this world is going to, and all they're trying to do now is to get you to say something. They want the church to act. They want the church to act in a way that they can judge them. Well, if, you, if you're going to be like that, God really wouldn't want you to be like that. 
And some people say, oh, no, they're not trying to do that. They did it to Peter. Peter told, Jesus told Peter he was going to deny him. And you think about it, when they kept asking Peter, are you him? Are you the one that hung with him? Are you that person? And think about it, when, when your kids or when somebody keeps asking you the same question over and over and over and just agonize you and agonize you, antagonize you and just keeps it up, you're going to snap. You're going to say something you're going to regret. But that is what the enemy, enemy does. He tries to get you off God. He wants you to get your eyes off God and onto Him. He wants you to focus on Him. We don't. Need, the church needs to keep walking and keep praying. This world is coming to a point where it's not going to be, as we see where it's coming today, God is still here. God is still able. God has still got His hand over this place. But what's going to happen when the church leaves? When God leaves? Do you think it's bad now? This is only the beginning. We need to keep walking. We need to keep praying. If somebody tries to, mess, is trying to get us off the Lord, we need to get them off the enemy and then show them the right way. Don't Keep focus on God. Keep focus on God. As I'm going to end with this, Tipper, you can go ahead and go to the piano. Continue in prayer. Do not get yourself in a situation like Lot did. Don't get yourself in a situation that you can't get out of. Don't get yourself in a situation where you cannot hear God anymore. Don't get yourself in a situation that's going to get you to the point that you're going to lose focus on what you work so hard for. This world is looking for something. This world is looking for an answer. They don't know how to do it. As we see all the rioters and all this going on, where is the church at? The church don't need to be out there. Uh, protesting with them. The church needs to be inside the church praying that God will move. That God will show His face and tell them it doesn't matter what's going on in this world today. There is only two, there's only one enemy. It's not the president. It's not anybody. It is the devil that is the biggest enemy that we have because he tries to get you off focus on what God is trying to show you what to do. And as we can all stand, we continue in prayer and watch the same with Thanksgiving. We need to be thankful that we can still be in a church today and pray and ask God for guidance, for wisdom, for understanding of what's going on. As we all know, the back, we all know what's going on. The Bible has told us, and it also, if you can read the Bible, history always repeats itself. But history, it will every time it gets worse and worse. We need God to intervene. We need God to move. And the only way for God to move is for His people to keep walking and keep praying. Can we ask the Lord for guidance right now? Thank you, Lord God, for this blessing.